Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. Today we're gonna be working on, oh dear, yes, it's a John Deere, 15 and a half horsepower, Briggs and Stratton, good old deer, uh, 13 horse is what the body says, 15 horse is what the hood says, and that's just a perfect example of things being put together by people. Oh, it's got a Kohler in it. Look at that. 13 horsepower Kohler. Kohler's a decent machine. Decent uh, motor. Can't complain. But the customer brought it to me with an electrical problem. He told me that his grandkids had gone out and messed with it. Uh, unbeknownst to him and they couldn't get it started and he didn't know why so he tried to figure it out himself uh, but the bottom line is that when he was when he hooked up the battery there was smoke coming from the battery terminals and from the solenoid the starter solenoid which is down here between the battery and the motor I really don't want to show you guys but it does smoke and it does heat up and so he told me the first thing he did was he found a blown fuse and I'm not sure what he found with the blown fuse or whatever the case may be let's see if this thing will smoke oh I have it unplugged um, but according to him, there was a fuse right here in one of these lines, and he didn't have another fuse, so he took the fuse out of the lines, and he thought he put them back together exactly the way he found them, but then when he hooked up the battery and turned on the key, nothing was happening. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's smoke coming off the battery. And there was smoke coming out of the solenoid. So I like to try to troubleshoot when a customer's standing here so that they have an idea of what's going on and know that I'm not trying to rip them off. So the first thing I did was I grabbed the solenoid out of the shop, brought it out here, disconnected the solenoid that was here. It's a standard four-post solenoid. I hooked it up, and we put the... We put the battery terminals back on, and it was still smoking, like Cheech and Chong. Still smoking, man. And, uh, you know, that tells me that there's some kind of a line cross. There's a, there's a line that's making a connection that's not supposed to. So I again asked him. Uh, he swore to his best of his memory that when he took the inline fuse out of here... He put the wires back exactly the way they were. And so what I found was that this plug here is fried. Let me pull it back apart. Let's see if I can show you that on this side of this plug right here, it's fried. This is this is fried, melted, broken. So what I did while he was standing here was unplug this okay one of these wires is supposed to be the charging system one of these wires is a kill wire i don't know i don't have the diagram in front of me of what they all are but the bottom line was when we unplugged that we could start the machine but we couldn't shut it back off because the kill is in there but by taking that plug taking it apart putting this back together start right back up and it's getting a little warm in my hands but in order to shut it off I turned off the key it won't shut off because one of these is a kill wire that's how we shut it off so we found the problem we're no longer smoking um, you know these are obviously loose I had to hold that on there to get it to start I need to get a bolt to put in there I cook the battery back up 
But because I was able to figure that out while he was standing here, we know his solenoid's good still. We don't have to replace that. But whatever he pulled out of here seems to be the issue. Now what we have coming to this line that's fried is this gray wire here. And don't quote me on that, I'm colorblind. Because it's black on one side, possibly gray. Gray on the other, that's the one that's fried. Anyway, the first thing I'm gonna do here is replace that fried connection. Now, when I went to the store to get this simple four post connector, this was 29 bucks, okay, to buy a plug like that. $29, I can tell you right now, that ain't happening. Old white people can kiss my butt. I'm not paying that kind of money just because rich people want me to pay more shit. So what I did was I got a trailer pigtail. This is the same wiring pigtail that you would have on the back of your vehicle for a trailer hitch. Okay, it's a four flat plug. Now it was 12 bucks to buy the plug with 36 inches of wire, which we didn't need just so that I got two ends like this that I can put together, All right? So I bought this for eight bucks instead, and I'm just gonna cut it right there, pull these wires apart and use this. This is a waterproof plug. It will handle the power, no problem, coming out of that. So that's what I bought. And I also bought a new fuse. This is the fuse holder. It's made by Busman. This was $6. And three fuses were six bucks. So this glorious feast here still cost $20, but it would have been 29 bucks for the plug and still would have had to pay the $12 for the fuse and fuse holder. So I saved them some money. This is waterproof. It's going to stay good and tight and it's going to replace this plug right here. This one. So I'm going to strip those wires. I'm going to cut the plug out, clean up the wires, put these together, make the connection, and then we're going to figure out, because I have no idea where the fuse goes. My thought process is that the fuse should be in line with the alternator. On the top, above, uh, below the flywheel is a ring of magnets. That's your alternator, and it sends current back out and back to your battery. And I believe that's where the fuse is going. That's where the fuse is going to go. What I do see here, and I don't know if he did this or not himself, but there are two wires here going to one connection, and that should be the problem. That should be what's causing the issue. So we're going to replace that plug real quick, and we're going to figure out where this fuse goes and see if we can't get this thing fixed for him. In the meantime, my Patreon supporters... If you're watching and you are a supporter of mine on Patreon, I am doing commercials or allowing you to do commercials for your channel on mine. So coming up here in just a second is a friend and supporter. And she put together a little one minute commercial about her channel. It's going to be put in right here and then we'll be back to our video. So if you're interested in shouting out your channel on mine because i get lots of views uh, just leave me a message in the comments hi i'd like to introduce myself my name is pam and you are watching the pam slime vlogs this is a short little intro to my channel i have a vlog channel with mostly haunted explorations of older cemeteries I also do live streams and I have left my channel as to basically an open book. Uh, I hope that you'll check it out. Again, it's the Pam Sign Vlogs and I appreciate you stopping in and checking it out. If you're seeing this video, you are watching Monkey Wrench and Kelly with the wrench.
I think. So, again, if you enjoy the content you see on my channel, again, the Pam Slime Vlogs, I'll put it up here and you'll be able to see it. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Okay, the first thing I did, whenever you're changing plugs, always change one wire at a time. Now, I know from experience that my kill wire is going to be this white wire. But if you're not sure, all you have to do is choose one, cut it, touch it together, you'll find out what's going on. Now, what I did was I wiggled the plug, and I actually plugged one thing at a time to find my kill wire. So, what I did was cut that wire off of the plug on both sides. I brought it together. I use heat shrink to seal it after it's been put back together. And now I have that one single wire connected there. I don't think it'll start with the rest of them unplugged, but let's find out. And then we also know that now it'll die by me turning off the key because those wires are where they're supposed to be. And that way, if you're not an electrician, you're not sure exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Sorry, I'm opening the tripod. If you're not sure exactly what you're supposed to be doing, you can still kind of figure it out. Let's see if I can move the camera by doing one wire at a time until you figure out what's going on. Now, that's not plugged. The rest of the plug's not plugged in. I'm putting the key back on. Off the key it should die all right so now we know that our kill wire is complete we also know that we don't need any of those other two wires three wires to make the tractor work okay because that's these are not plugged in now what I need to do these are the end this is the end that matters what I need to do now is start this thing and find out which one is live. In other words, one of these should be power return for the battery. That's what I'm looking for now. So I'm actually going to start it and I'm going to use my, uh, my light and see if one of those has connecting power coming back. Because that's the one that I want to put the fuse on. So I got my little test light here. It's connected to the negative side of the battery. Let's start it back up and see if we got power coming. getting bitten everywhere by mosquitoes that I didn't spray like underneath my socks and my underwear so I'm not going to be out here very much longer that's for damn sure I just blew my test light as soon as I touched it that thing fried out and flashed out so we may be I may have to spend some time online and see if I can find Yep, test light shot. Just broke. Of course, exactly when you need it. So, there's the situation anyway. All three of them seem to be showing power. At least two of them did. I think it fried on the third one, which is the one that's broken in here. So, we know our kill wire's back in place. I'm going to have to find a diagram, a schematic. There are three lines left here, and here 
three lines are going into two because these two are connected even though they're separate here and I don't know why that is so now I'm gonna have to spend a few hours online and track down the electric on this particular exact model to find out what is going on because I don't I don't know which one of these two is supposed to be connected and now without my freaking test light I can't even tell I know for a fact that both of these lines had power coming to them but they're both connected here so does that mean that this is the return from the alternator you know what that makes sense because if he took if he took the fuse out that would make sense there I gotta find out what this gray wire is and uh, my guess is he took it's got it my guess is that he took the fuse out of one of these so I'm gonna have to find out and I'll be back and that's gonna be the end of it for today because I'm it's getting dark soon and I'm not staying out here with the mosquitoes trying to figure this shit out okay thankfully it didn't take me as long as I thought it would it only took me about an hour to find what was going on it looks to me by looking at what I found online was that the customer did not remove a fuse per se that it was a one-way diode and it's part of a protection loop that goes on this and many many other machines now they're all proprietary of course and basically what it does if you look down here you will see a series of relays okay and all of this extra wiring is all just part of the safety system that's in this machine there are five safeties on this machine one's in the seat one's in the pedal one's in the uh, blade control one's in reverse and they have all this stuff wired up to a bunch of stuff you don't need I'm not telling you to remove all of that stuff, but I'm telling you it's not necessary for the machine to run. And basically what happened was the protection loop diode went bad. And what it allow what when a diode works basically, it allows current to go in one direction but not in the other, okay? So it can go that way to the right, but it can't go to the left. So it can't backfeed and that means that if there were an issue, one of those relays went bad, there was a short somewhere, it could potentially send power back in a direction it shouldn't be, and it could fry something. Now, that's not usually a big problem on these things. In fact, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it's negligible. Uh, there's a very small chance of that. Plus, the diode for this particular machine is not even available anymore um, the few places I found that do say they can get it are on back order uh, the other places just plain out say unavailable and there's nothing that I can do about that so basically what I did was I went in, I went down and I tracked down the lines that were there the kill line uh, the charger line and what I did was was basically I took this line which was the diode back feed line I took that out of the equation I'm going to because I I took the plastic off but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that wire I'm going to back it onto itself just by bending it in half and then I'm just going to tape it up with some electrical tape I took it out of the system I don't want to remove it in case he decides at some point in the future to reinstall it for whatever reason so basically what was happening was this is a power line okay and it connects down there to another part of the power system and what it was doing was putting power to a negative this is a negative here and it was putting positive to negative and causing a dead short so I took this out of the line because there's no diode the diode would have stopped that power from going and, and making contact with the negative and since we're taking that loop out of the system, that's what we did. So I'm gonna leave this, this wire right here, okay? I connected these three and shrink wrapped them. I connected them over here and shrink wrapped them. So now he's got a, a watertight plug that he can again plug in and plug out. And the only reason you would ever unplug that is if you were removing the engine from the machine. Um, 
but it's nice to have them. So I'll just take some duct tape and duct tape that together, or electrical tape, and I'll do the same thing to the extra wire on this side. I would not remove those just because you don't need to. But what I did was I connected and put the new plug in it. I've still got to get a bolt for the battery. Um, but he basically wanted this tractor to run and work and not have to put a whole lot of money into it. So to take out that protection loop just made more sense to him financially. Plus he doesn't have, want to have to wait for it. So before I button all this back up, tape that up, find a place for that wiring to sit, uh, you know, feed it back through and have it held. I just want to show you that everything's back to turnkey. As soon as I get the bolt for that. So all the systems should be fine at this point. I'm going to button up those wires and show you what it looks like at the end. So I'm basically, I'm finished with the project. All I want to do, Chaka Khan, is I'm just going to put a little bit of tape around here just so that it holds the wires. They're connected in shrink wrap, so this is just to hold that spare wire so it doesn't float around. I'll do the same thing on this side. No reason to have it exposed. Just like that, that's all. And then the excess power wire here, just so it doesn't make any kind of connection anywhere because it is a live power wire without that loop in place. It's not necessary. And basically, before you say, wait a minute, if you're covering up a power wire, what is it power? Well, basically, it's a power wire, but it's not connected to the motor anymore through that diode system. It's just connected to another power wire down there, which comes off of the battery down there. This is just an extra line. Um, I'm going to double check. Oh, there's no headlights. So I always just double check that everything works when I remove a power line. But this is a power line coming off the battery. It's not like it's coming off the alternator. Okay, so it's not like it has to go anywhere. I could literally wear it wise together down there. I could cut it right there. And whatever that power wire is, is running power to, whether it's a safety switch or a diode or whatever, they just tapped into it for this wire that came up to this protection loop. So we don't need it anymore. So that's just going to stay down, tucked in there. And then basically, since we added a plug with a few extra inches, I am just going to, there's a there's an engine hoist mount right there, and basically what I'm going to do just to keep this from vibrating around and giving a bunch of, bunch of movement we don't need and there's no reason for it, I'm going to put a zip tie right through there just to give it a place to rest. That's all I'm doing. Okay, doesn't even have to be tight. Cut the end off. And that, my friends, is the end of that song. So his plug is there now in case he ever needs to remove the harness or remove the engine. All that's left is putting a bolt right here. There's no more dead short. There's no more problems. There's nothing burned out. And the old switch, or the old plug, I mean, that was all burned out and fried. That is no more. So that's it. Thanks for hanging around. I hope this helps somebody. Again, I would never tell some anybody to remove safety switches from machines. I only tell you what I personally do or I give a customer an opportunity. In this case, it was a back feed protection loop. It wasn't a safety issue. I personally remove all the safeties off of everything that I personally use because they're nothing but a wiring pain in the butt that to me isn't necessary. So we removed the protection loop out of there instead of having to replace the diode for future issues. If it fries a relay, somehow I'm responsible for that. So, you know, I warranty my work. So do me a favor, subscribe. It's right there somewhere between my chin and my balls. I'm um, getting close to a thousand. 
and uh, hit the like button if you get a chance on your way out the door. Thanks for stopping by. See you soon.